Spiritual warfare. Hello, this is Chris speaking with a video about spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare is a book by Jed McKenna, his third book. And it's very, very recommendable. It's one of the best books out there, one of the most honest and direct books. There's no hidden truth, no symbolism, no um, any kind of unintelligible metaphors like in the Bible for example or in many other holy books or mystic books they're full of metaphors because back then the authors were afraid to be killed if they spoke plainly but nowadays it's possible to speak plainly <clears throat> and in my view taking the Hawkins scale for example Shurbindo Savitri and Chad McKenna's Spiritual Warfare are the two books with the highest calibration. They're third tier books. I can recommend all other Chad McKenna books too, but this one is the most intense. It really deals with everything you need to know. There's, if there were one book, only one I would take somewhere, it would be this one. Of course, you don't need books. No one needs books, but they can be useful nonetheless. Because we're being brainwashed all the time by illusions. So to balance this, it's good to read some books which are closer to the truth. Now, spiritual warfare sounds a bit extreme, a bit ex over-exaggerated warfare, but no. It's not over-exaggerated. Let me start from the other side, from the opposite. More than 20 years ago, I went to a martial arts camp in France. And after the martial arts camp, there was a Tibetan Buddhist camp. And I stayed on for a few days, I asked them to stay, and they said, okay, if I clean the toilets and wash the dishes and stuff, I can stay on for free. That's what I did. And I had some very cool talks with some lamas, but I wasn't too impressed by the crowd. Actually, it was some kind of holiday camp. That once a year, the <clears throat> European Buddhist followers, mostly German and French, they came there with their families, camping, having a good old time, and if they had time, of, of their um, looking after the children and cooking and so on. Um, they went to hear the lectures of the Lamas and Rinpoches. Since then, this is what I call holiday Buddhism. It's what fits into your holiday. It's a spiritual practice that fits into your free time. Otherwise, you're a normal person, a normal sheep. And spiritual warfare is the opposite. You fight like a guerrilla warrior. You fight as if your life depends on it, because it depends on it. Because you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. The reason why most people hold back and don't put 100% of their effort and time and commitment into spiritual awakening is because they think they can lose something. But what can you lose? What is there to lose? It's all an illusion. Normal society, especially our Western technological society, is based on lies and illusion. What is there to lose? To practice spirituality as a hobby or side act is actually much more dangerous than not to practice it at all, because then it becomes just another routine, just another excuse, just another fluffy flamingo. You're already living in a dystopia. You're already living in the matrix. A friend of mine sent me a very good quote by Ken Wilber recently from the book One Taste, one of his earlier books. He writes, the same thing happens when you realize that ordinary life is just a dream, just a movie, just a play. You don't become more cautious, more timid, more reserved. You start jumping up and down and doing flips precisely because it's all a dream. It's all pure emptiness. 
You don't feel less, you feel more, because you can afford to. You are no longer afraid of dying, and therefore you are not afraid of living. You become radical and wild and intense and vivid and shocking and silly. You let it all come pouring through, because it's all your dream. Gurus and masters and teachers, they can show you this is the way out of prison, this is the way out of the illusion. But you still have to walk out yourself. You still have to break out yourself. You still have to hike up the mountain yourself. No one will carry you up. In the book A Spiritual Warfare, Chad McKenna calls himself and his friend Brett a zero-tolerance, anti-bullshit hardliner. And one of the things this means is that you're not only fighting a war against Maya, you're fighting a war against yourself, against telling bullshit to yourself. He writes, Self-deceit is the hardest habit to break because it tells us we ain't self-deceived. And at the same time, this kind of warfare requires that at some point you have to de-weaponize. You have to lower your defenses. You have to stop struggling against the current of life. At some point, victory will only be found by surrender. And this will take the largest amount of courage. Again, this is similar to UG's The Courage to Stand Alone and to Nietzsche's will to power. Jed starts his book with a quote by Mark Twain. When we remember we are all mad, the mysteries disappear and life stands explained. Enlightenment is to pull yourself up out of the swamp by yourself. There's a German fairy tale about Baron Münchhausen. And that's exactly what he does. He has long hair and he takes himself by his ponytail and pulls himself out of the swamp by himself. An impossible feat. And why is it possible? Because life is an illusion. It's Maya. It's the Matrix. And the Matrix doesn't mean that you cannot die in the Matrix, that you cannot feel pain in the Matrix or misery. You can still feel all of that and you can still die. The difference is that much more is possible than you th think it is, than you have been taught it is. And to find out what is possible is spiritual warfare, by all means necessary. And unfortunately, one of the things that can hold you back is religion and spirituality is to practice something and then say, okay, but I'm practicing it. I'm already a practicing whatever, Buddhist or mystic. What more can I do? Well, I'll tell you what more you can do. You can spend every second of your waking life in spiritual warfare, in verifying everything. Is that really how it is? Is that the ultimate truth? Or is it just another layer of illusion? Just another way of falling asleep. So there's a decision to make here. Like Carlos Castaneda explains, at some point in your life, you decided to participate in the illusion. Now it is time to decide that you won't participate in the illusion anymore. That's it. So as you see, I haven't summarized the book here, and I won't, because I won't spoiler anything. If you're interested, read the three books by Jed McKenna, especially Spiritual Warfare. It's really, really good if you're a bookish type, and if you're open to Jed McKenna's style of humor. Of course, it's not everyone's cup of tea. It's not a must-read. No one has to read any book. But if you're into books, this is definitely one of the top 10 I can recommend. Because it's brutally honest. 
and you don't need any mythological keys to decipher it, which is the case with many other high-level books. The Ode magazine describes it as very disturbing, and it is, it is very disturbing, which is probably the aim of the author. As Bert Hellinger said, the founder of Family Constellation, confusion creates space for the new. So what Chad McKenna destroys here in the Enlightenment trilogy, with Spiritual Warfare being the third book, and also his book The Dream State, is all belief systems. All belief systems, you can get rid of them by reading these four books. Because beliefs don't help. Why should you believe in something? Either you know it or you don't know it. Nor should you believe anything Jed says, or UG says, or I say, or Buddha said. Just find out by yourself. Make up your own mind. Because that is what the mind does. The mind constantly creates. It takes part in Maya. It is part of Maya. The mind creates reality as we go along. And then we complain about reality. Well, in actual fact, it's our mind. And the mind, which Rubindo calls the overmind and the supramental. That's all there is. Thank you for liking and subscribing. Thank you for joining me as a Patreon. Thank you to all Patreons. Thank you for sharing the videos with your friends and see you soon.